All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Arthur Smith, man, let's freaking go. So the Arthur Smith offensive coordinator hire has me absolutely thrilled. He was the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons for a couple of seasons. He was with the Tennessee Titans a couple of years prior to that. And that was when Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee Titans offense, you know, they ended up making the AFC championship game in 2019, folks. I love this hire. We're going to talk about it in today's video. I think this is something you still got to get the quarterback. We'll talk about that soon. But I think this is a difference making hire. And just considering Matt Canada for the last way too many years, um, I'm so excited. I know my Steelers fans are as well. So with Tennessee, they were running up a storm. Now, keep in mind, you have Derrick Henry. You got one of the best running backs in the National Football League. They averaged 153.5 rushing yards in a game. They averaged 5.1 yards per carry. That was good for second in the National Football League. 2019, Ryan Tannehill made the freaking Pro Bowl, right? They made the AFC Championship game, the Tennessee Titans. His final year with Tennessee they were fourth in points and they were second in total yards, but he's coming over from Atlanta as the head coach. And I was the coordinator, uh, typically history, you know, a, a head coach going to an OC doesn't get me all that excited because I'm just so like burned by Matt Nagy and his tenure in Chicago or whatever. But 2022 with the Atlanta Falcons, Tyler Algier, the rookie, rushed for over 1,000 yards. The Falcons that season were third in rushing yards. This past year, they were ninth in total rushing. And we know Pittsburgh, Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, one of the craziest potential wise. We saw it once Matt Canada got fired. We saw how good that running back tangent was. Uh, but folks, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We only saw the tip of the iceberg there, especially with such a young runner in Jayla Warren. But before we get any further into tonight's video, if you guys enjoy, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. Steelers fans, we're going to be posting a ton of Steelers videos every single week for this long eight month ass off season. So if you try and get this video to 250 likes, that would mean the absolute world to me. So here's one of the big reasons. We'll talk about Kenny Pickett. We'll talk about the QB position because that's first and foremost. Now that you got the offensive coordinator, you got a big, big, smart, versatile coordinator in Arthur Smith, you got to get the quarterback right. And so we'll talk about that in just a second here. But one thing that I noticed with Pittsburgh, and it was specifically with Kenny Pickett. Um, I know Pat dealt with some injuries at various points. I know Kenny dealt with some injuries. Uh, Matt Canada being in and out of the building. It was just kind of an inconsistent offensive year for the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? From 2021 to 2023, the Atlanta Falcons ran the most plays with multiple tight ends on the field with over 1,500. Pittsburgh in that time, 22nd in the National Football League with only 844. Darnell Washington had such a underwhelming season, but when he first came into the scene, he was a rookie. The dude is a just blocking monster. The dude himself is a freaking monster. But on the season, we only saw seven catches for 61 yards. Now, Pat Fryermuth had a horrible statistical season. In fact, there was really only one or two games where he made you know big time impact. They weren't throwing him the ball. Kenny Pickett wasn't throwing the ball well. So once again, you know, all things considered, uh, Pat Fryermuth just had a low season, a down season, but so did the whole Pittsburgh Steelers offense. I mean, come on, folks. They were putting up less than 18 points per game. That was forced, fourth worst in the National Football League. I got such a good defense. I've got George Pickens. I've got my running backs. But anyways, Pat Fryermuth had an underwhelming season. Darnell Washington is more or was more of a pass blocking, run blocking, absolute monster. I'm just excited hearing that statistic because I know that Pat Fryermuth is one of the most underappreciated tight ends in the National Football League, and he's still so young. So I'm just excited about the multiple tight end unit. Now, the quarterback position, Pittsburgh's got to figure it out, all right? And, um, you know, we talked about this in our last Steelers video after their postseason loss. Kenny Pickett, I don't think, is the guy. And we actually heard the Steelers say this. Here's what Rooney had to say. I think the biggest thing we need is quality play at the quarterback position. Mason Rudolph came in and showed, I think, what we're capable of when we do get quality play at the quarterback position. That feels like such a jab at Kenny Pickett. Here's the thing with Kenny. I want him to succeed. Mason Rudolph's an impending free agent, right? So apparently it seems like Pittsburgh's 
you know, most favorable or what they're leaning towards is re-signing Mason Rudolph and then having the quarterback competition in training camp and in the offseason be between Mason and Kenny. I don't love that. I do like what I saw from Mason Rudolph, especially in the regular season. I know, you know, man, at the end of the day, going up again, it's a miracle that Pittsburgh made the playoffs with the way that offense performed all season. But Kenny Pickett had zero passing touchdowns in his final four games on this season. And once again, he didn't play all the whole year, right? He got injured. Six touchdowns, four interceptions. Guys, he had one passing touchdown in his final seven games. You don't need to cut him. You don't need to trade him. My point is, and I'm not saying you need to draft a quarterback in the first round. In fact, I saw a, a mock draft where Pittsburgh in, I believe, the third or fourth round drafted Jordan Travis out of Florida State, who had 20 touchdowns, only two interceptions, completion percentage of 64%. That kind of got me licking my chops here thinking, damn, you know what? If they draft the QB in like the fourth round, I actually really love the idea of that. Obviously, you have the Ryan Tannehill connection with Arthur Smith, so it wouldn't surprise me if... You know, they're not able to re-sign Mason Rudolph and they go with Kenny Pickett, maybe a late quarterback and Ryan Tannehill is the veteran presence there. Uh, but still, man, I need more pop from this offense. I need more versatility from this offense. And Kenny Pickett just didn't provide it for me. And here's one of my final arguments with this is, you know, Kenny got injured at such an unideal time, right? It was right after Matt Canada's firing. You know, he had a really good game, like a couple of weeks, like a game or two before his injury. It was actually the game before his injury. 24-33, 278 pass yards against Cincinnati, but zero touchdowns. Yeah, he threw zero interceptions, but zero touchdowns. Yeah, I need a guy who's going to have more than one passing touchdown in his final seven games of the regular season, no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance are. Now, to Kenny's credit, uh, Matt Canada read, or led the most predictable offense in the National Football League. I mean, it was that bad. And when I have my starting quarterback, you know, my QB2, the quarterback of the quote-unquote future, and he goes down with an injury, and the third-string quarterback, Mason Rudolph, I know Steelers fans hate when I say that, but that's what he was. Mason Rudolph was the third-string quarterback, guys. When he comes in here, wins three straight football games, doesn't throw an interception, gets your team into the playoffs, and then you head into the playoffs, Kenny Pickett's healthy. Why, if I have to think to myself who the quarterback is going to be, that's a huge issue. Like you're not having, if Patrick Mahomes gets injured for the final month of the season, if Josh Allen gets injured for the final month of the season, and whoever their respected backups are on those teams come in and just, you know, win and do their job and do a really good job of it. Nobody's thinking in the first round of the playoffs, oh, you know what, let's, let's ride the hot hand here. And so that was enough for me. And like I said, this is my opinion. I never, I would 100%. And I think all the Steelers fans were starting Mason Rudolph in that playoff game against the Buffalo Bills, no matter Kenny Pickett's injury or health. That's a concern. So you got your OC and now you need to figure out your quarterback. So what I want to, what I want from my Steelers fans is obviously hit the like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. I also made a, a football podcast links down below, but anyways, who's your quarterback one next season? Are you going a veteran? Are you going a rookie QB? Or is it Mason Rudolph or is it Kenny Pickett? Let me know down below. That's it for me. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. Also, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on Arthur Smith. So we will see you soon because this is freaking awesome.